so yeah my name is Lanston Nicole Wilson I volunteer for the Give Blood Spread Love team and I also advocate for sickle cell and blood donation and I'm joined by lovely Courtney who I'm very excited to um, find out about her experiences with sickle cell and I might chime in with my own just because I have sickle cell too um, so yeah so let's get started Courtney tell us a bit about yourself and your job role as a creative at creative actor Hi, um, my name is Courtney McLean Calvin. Um, so I work as I said previously as a recruitment assistant at Creative Access. So in essence, that's helping to coordinate interviews. I run a lot of our CV clinics. I get to meet a lot of our candidates and help them with a lot of their applications towards getting their some of their, their first jobs and just an entry into the creative industries. Nice. That sounds really busy. <laughs> um, could you tell us a little bit about like what sickle cell is for those who don't know in the chat? Yeah, so sickle cell is a genetic blood condition um, that you can, it's, well, you will get it from birth. So it impacts a lot of um, people in regards to their day-to-day -day lives and um, it can cause a lot of pain. Um, there's a specific term in the sickle cell community where it's called you get a crisis and so with the sickle cell crisis that it can lead to a lot of hospitalizations that happen quite frequently that happened to me a lot in my childhood that um, I'd be hospitalized because of a sickle cell crisis and um, in general it's a blood condition that can really um, affect a lot of families and it does affect a lot of livelihoods. So that was a great explanation. Um, so like, how does, because sickle cell affects everyone differently because it's a genetic condition. So like, how does it affect you in your day to day? So for me with my day to day, um, firstly, it, I get this a lot, um, no matter the weather, I get like a lot of tiredness and fatigue often. Um, on a day-to-day -day basis, I have some issues in regards to my energy levels. Sometimes I have small shooting pains that happen. Um, it can really happen anywhere, but for me consistently it will be in my arms or my back or on my stomach sometimes, which is a new new development. Sickle cell is a, can really transform. It has for me over the last few years. I've had a few changes with that but day to day it's mostly fatigue and uh those small annoying little pains thanks so i have out of curiosity like has it gotten worse over time or has it just evolved over time like how do you describe that I've, I've been thinking about this a lot recently um because i remember being told when i was what, 21 years old that it could evolve but i wasn't really sure what that meant and I would say for me, I believe it has gotten worse in terms of intensity, because I think when I was younger, the pain episodes used to happen so frequently that it was like maybe three days spent and I'd be like, oh gosh, another one, yeah, whatever, we're just, we're going again. Mm -hmm. And for me now, I have a few more gaps, so it might be a month instead of three days and I feel like my body forgets about the sickle cell and so when it hits now it's a lot stronger I think for me it impacts in terms of um it kind of it knocks me down it can take me out a little bit at the moment I'm still finding my balance with the new evolution of pain that I've had more recently and uh, I'm told it may change again so we'll see in a few years time <laughs> Yeah. And with your like busy job, has that affected how like you selected your career? Because I guess if you have like, something that makes you tired and is evolving and unpredictable, like did that have an impact on things? It did for me. Um, again, I was I was still getting used to my evolution of my condition as I was entering the job market. So as I've gone through a couple of different roles, I've really learned what helps me and what's really beneficial for me, for example, is my company allows me to work from home as much as I need to. And 
they're really, really supportive in that aspect. I can explain what's wrong and I've learned a lot of communication helps me with my, especially with my, my team, because it can be a lot very fast paced. So being able to have the ability to talk to team members and people really has helped me find that balance a bit better. Um, because I think when I first entered the workforce, I didn't know how to ask for the support. But now being a few jobs down the line, I've really found that the people around you are, they, they usually will help you if you ask for it. And so that's been really beneficial for me. That's interesting. Um, so this, again, is off script, but like, did you ever hide having sickle cell when applying for jobs or were you always really upfront about it? No, I did for, from like, what well, I started working at 15. So anywhere between the ages of 15 to probably 20, I didn't want to tell anybody that I had sickle cell. I didn't, A, because I don't think I knew how to handle it. And a lot of the times what used to happen to me when I was in the workplace, if I did have a sickle attack, someone, or I'd come back from a sickle attack, I should say a lot of people used to say to me, oh, I completely forgot you had sickle. So I used to think, well, maybe that's easier. If people don't think I have it, why tell them I have it? And then we create a whole conversation around it. And so, but I think what then happened for me when I did have um, crisis, especially in the office, when I've had a crisis in the office, it felt really humiliating to have that experience and it kind of be public. I remember in one of my old jobs, um, somebody just, uh, it was an open plan office and someone stood up and they were like, oh, you're back from the hospital. And I was like, oh, whoa. <laughs> um, and I've never experienced something so open, especially because so many people, people who I hadn't told, that I'd even had a condition just suddenly knew and they're like oh you're in the hospital and it sparked all these conversations and it felt really uncomfortable uncomfortable for me at that time so from the day that happened I kind of decided to try and get ahead of that ever happening again and so I was just like you know what if I tell somebody what happens, is it better? Because if I don't tell them and that happens to me again, it, was, it just, it was, it felt surprisingly humiliating to be outed, kind of, just odd, <laughs> so. Yeah, no, I, I get that. Like, I feel like, especially if it's an ambulance kind of situation where it's sirens, they're rushing you and everyone's kind of like, what's going on? And you're in pain, so you can't really communicate that. So it's like, just get me out of here, please. Or stop yeah. staring at me. So yeah, I can really, I can really resonate yeah. with that. It's actually how um, I made one of my best friends. Um, I had a situation where I had a sickle attack in public. It was back at uni. They had to wheel me through the electrical with like 200 eyes on me. Um, it was like my first, second week of uni. So it was when people were actually there. <laughs> um, mm. And my best friend now, she came with me. I didn't really know her at the time, but she um, she was able to bat away people and be like, oh, looking at this girl. She just needs calm. She doesn't need all of this. Yeah. 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 It's stressful. So stressful enough, I should say. So wow. That's amazing. Did she have any idea beforehand or did she just? I had told her. Um, in passing but it wasn't it wasn't an in-depth conversation until we were really in the ambulance and she had to start to describe on my behalf what was happening um, mm. I have a medical card that kind of explains a little bit about oh this person has sickle cell this is what to do in that instance so she kind of read off the card but then they'd ask additional questions things about medicine and and so she really um, had to think on her feet and she was trying to involve me in the conversation but there's only so much I could really do at that point so following that day is when we had a real sit down talk about that so she was like this happens again I want to know what to be able to say because she stayed with me all night um, when that happened um, at university and so she really did learn and she went away and she did her own research and even now she'll every so often I'll get a text um we have maybe bad weather or something and she's like you came to mind are you okay are you good is everything is everything okay um 
So it's uh, it's really nice to have that support system now. Yeah, no, it's so important to have someone to advocate for you because when you're when you're in that state of crisis, it's just so hard to communicate. So having someone there with you just makes the world of difference, even if they're not as experienced like your friend was, but at least she was able to support you in some ways. Um, the next question was like, have you experienced any like discrimination in the workplace because of your sickle cell or felt concerned about being discriminated against? Um, I've, I've definitely always had it in the back of my mind when I've had conversations about it, how are people going to react? I think the most of that situation I experienced was um, that would have been when I was doing waitressing back at um, uni and I had a um, sickle attack during my shift. So I went to my boss at the time and just explained um, I have a medical condition and because I didn't tell them at the time that I had sickle cell, but I just said, I have a medical condition. I'm really not feeling well and I really need to go home. And she looked at me and she said, you look fine though. What's, you don't look like anything's wrong with you. Why can't you stay? And um, I remember because it was an eight hour day. And so she ended up um, capping my pay at four hours, even though I'd already been there for eight hours. And she said, due to absence and and uh, um, I think she noted something about a lack of trust with this uh, with this candidate or something like that on my uh, employer like page and so I didn't get a lot of work for a couple of weeks it's like I had to rebuild trust with the team to be able to say I can do my job I'm not just gonna bow out and even if I do there is a reason but they didn't they weren't very accommodating and uh, yeah hopefully that never happens again because it wasn't it wasn't uh, a nice situation to experience especially so overtly I think I was quite surprised um, to just not be believed so but I I know I know how it can look and I know it can look like you're just kind of bowing out but that's just not what I was doing but it was in the middle of a crisis and I didn't really want to go into detail about all the things that are wrong and how I feel and I was like I just need to leave and not be here like serving people food and, and do all of that whilst I'm not feeling a hundred percent um so yeah, I'd never worked with her again, um, but yeah, I'd, I would I'd, I would really hope that never happens to anybody else because it was it was really demoralizing. I'd say like it really made me feel disconnected. I quit not long after um, because it just it was so unsupportive and it was so strange to me. Um, but I think that's part of having an invisible disability that sometimes people are just they look. And until you're writhing around in pain, it's like nothing looks wrong, looks perfect. Yeah, looks fine. Fine. yeah. meanwhile, it's chaos happening underneath. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, like I had a similar experience with, I think it also depends on the kind of job and career. Like manual labor jobs seem to have like less sympathy um, when that happens. Like I remember getting a crisis and I called to say that I have a crisis and I can't come in and they were like but it was around Christmas time which was like the busiest periods and they were like why can't you like why can't you come in they didn't really believe me and then when I did eventually go in it was like I think that was the first job that they never kept me on from because I had missed such a vital period in their time but I wasn't well <laughs> yeah I wasn't well and um I'd experienced going in with crises before just because I wanted to keep face or you know yeah. and it, it's just even worse and more impactful than if I just stayed at home to rest to look after myself so yeah, yeah it's it's hard um you mentioned about telling your employer about having sickle cell at what point did you do this and did you ask them to make any um adjustments to support you um so I mentioned my condition pretty early on um we have um I'm losing my thoughts here on what it's called but we have a supportive 
planning document for our future. We have a personal document that we build with our line managers um, discussing, um, starts off discussing about mental health, but also goes through just what do you need? Is your equipment around you okay? Do you need any specific uh, adjustments um, where you are? And so that um, having that um, time one-on-one -on -one with my line manager kind of opened the door for me to be able to talk about my condition because before that I was when I joined I was like when should I tell them what at what point do I have an opening to tell them because I really wanted to be open about the condition as early as possible um, so when this um, mental health planning document came up I was like okay now's my moment if we're going to talk about reasonable adjustments sure um, and so we went through um, my condition a bit we spoke about what I'd need if I had a crisis we spoke about um, do we tell my other team members is it something I want to disclose with them or is it something to just keep between us um, which was helpful because I'd actually never been asked that before it was for me I always kind of assumed if I'm going to tell you I have to tell my team but it was actually a, a level of separation that I didn't really think about I did tell my team anyways but it was um it was nice to have the option to be honest um and so some of my reasonable adjustments weren't so much for the office necessarily I think we we, my adjustments was just about being able to have conversations. Um, so I wanted to be able to know that I'd, I'd be allowed to work from home. I'd be okay to leave early if that was something that was needed. I'd be okay to take off a couple of days if my medication was really strong and it was affecting me in, and, and my thoughts and maybe even putting together a coherent email and things like that. Um, so it was really, um, it was really helpful for me to know that it was an option before something had even happened that we had a plan ready to go. Um, and that was something I'd not experienced in the workplace as much before. Um, I think I remember having like plans to do with if you have a crisis back at school and maybe even secondary school, but after that, it kind of stopped and it was just like, well, good luck. <laughs> Whereas um, in this job, it was the ability to be able to say, no, this is what I need. This is what will be beneficial for me. Um, and, uh, especially to have it written down. I think it's always beneficial to have it written down um, to, and it's flexible in case anything pops up. So that was really supportive to know ahead of time and it's definitely a format I will take going forward. It's amazing. Um, is creative access you work for, right? Yeah, okay, I might, might have to add that to this. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, that's really, it's really good to have like your employers so um conscientious of like mental health needs which turned into physical needs and um having sickle cell as well because i think that's a real step forward especially in the world that we live in now i think adjustments can be made if they're necessary um and they should if they want to retain the workforce so i think it should be like a common thing that employers do um and like i think from my experience i never I didn't mention it until one time I did get a crisis and then I was still trying to take my laptop into hospital and mm. like do something and then um, I just told my manager I'm not coming in and I'm not feeling well um, and then when I did go in back to the office and I told her oh I have sickle cell she was the first manager that didn't need an explanation because she'd seen it before um, and I, that was probably the first time I was like finally I don't need to explain what's happening and so from that point on it was like just being open and she was like if you take days off take days off you need to work from home work from home but like it just seemed so it was crazy because it's like I always had to come in nine to five like just like everyone else but then in being open and honest it was like oh if I'm tired if I have pain it's okay I can do the work from home and I think this new world of working from home is definitely 
hopefully make things more accessible to everyone yeah. um, in the workforce. Um, so the next one I wanted to ask you was like, um, what would your advice be to someone in sickle cell who may be worried or concerned about telling their employer because of how it may impact their career? Um, I think it's better to try and have the conversation where you can because I think the fear of the conversation may a lot of the time is usually worse than the conversation and then so if you do have that talk and you've learned that the company can't be accommodating and that they don't really understand what's going on you now have your knowledge and you can make the choice to leave or if you do find that they're really supportive and accommodating and are willing to help then you now know that it's a it's a it's a great space to be and it's a space where you can hopefully grow knowing you've already had that talk for me I just um I find the difference in having the conversation versus not having had the conversation big big thing I feel like walking around with sickle cell and not telling anybody especially in the workplace it can just feel like this huge huge burden and when you I guess surprise people with it I feel like they may be really supportive and they may be really helpful or they may be panicked and just really not react the best. I think for me, the best experiences I've had is people that know what's going on, when it's going on, as you said before, not really having to explain, especially in those moments of having a crisis. It's a lot easier for me to just to just be able to be free and knowing that people are aware and it's not a secret and I know that the conversation is daunting it really really is um but I think it really helps you at the end of the day and if it helps you work better and helps you work the best you can then I'd say have it as when you feel comfortable to go for it and if you want to make notes, if you want to come all prepared like I did with a, 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 or a, anything but like a presentation, I was ready to go to just have a deep dive and explain. I was like, Let, let's talk about this. Like, I really want you to know what's going on. And um, I think it will just really help you in terms of your future with that company, of especially just to know, okay, this is a sports space or this is not for me and uh, it's time to it's time to go that's some great advice I think when I was listening to you speak I was thinking of like a younger version of me who was just fresh out of university and like I just needed that first job that first break because there's so much pressure to like get that first job and then once you do your own so it's like mentioned in sickle cell I would have felt like well back then I felt like oh no I need to make sure I get this job because there's already so many things working against me I don't have experience so now I'm going to talk about sickle cell would they want to accommodate someone like me so I think it's just you're right like if the place is meant for you and like if it works for you then you should definitely like mention it up front but I guess that also comes from a place well for me it comes from a place of experience where it's like if I was up front back at the very beginning then certain things that I did like <laughs> have a crisis then still go on a train to get to work yeah. um like that wouldn't have happened because I would have been open and honest with my employer um but it's also difficult when you're in that situation where it's like I need this job like I don't want anything to go against yeah. the application so it's like finding that that balance and just that understanding that you know there are jobs mm -hmm. out there but I would definitely recommend I would inform the employer after the offer, um, not necessarily before the offer, because I think you're right, you don't want to deter them from you in any way. I think it'd be really beneficial to, once you've got it written down, to say, if you want you, you're our best candidate, you can especially then say, if they were to turn around and be discriminatory, you can then actively be able to say, 
is that your reason for not wanting me because I have a medical condition and offering support you can you could open up the dialogue a lot more once you know that you're that you're that person that they want personally just a thought that makes a lot of sense um da -da -da. the next one was could you talk us through some of like the main physical practices you've learned to implement in office to support your health comfort and prevent a crisis um, so in regards to prevention of a crisis in the office, what I do is I always have a drink with me like at all times, water, tea, juice, something. Um, I also carry a blanket, which I think people kind of look at me funny sometimes when I have it, but it's really helpful for me. I, I carry a blanket and I carry a fan. Um, so if it's too warm I've got my fan if it's too cold I have my blanket and then I have my various drinks um I have like a little station set up and ready to go when I'm in the office it's just I found that it can be so you don't know what's going on so I kind of prepare for all eventualities I think that's something my mom taught me a lot of the time she before I went into my first office job she was like bring a blanket bring a mini heater if you can it will help so much and so for me to just help me regulate my own temperature that's that's what I do um sometimes I look good sometimes people ask for the blanket so <laughs> it really is a 50 50 shot so yeah no preparation is key. like I don't know why preparation like to be prepared doesn't always come naturally to me. So like I was just like, yeah, la di da di da. I left my medications at home. Yeah. Then bam, something happens. Um yeah. so yeah, carrying like your medications and what helps around this is very important because sickle cells are unpredictable. You don't know when or how it's gonna hit you. So yeah, be prepared. Be I, think prepared. That I, I wasn't originally as prepared. But every time I didn't do something and I always just could hear my mum's voice saying, oh, you need to get your water, you need to get like your bottle, you need to be prepared. And every time something would happen, it's like she had a sixth sense about this stuff. And I was like, OK, fine. I think I think it was after university that I just went, OK, you know what, blanket, bottle, just leave it in the bag at this rate. I just need it. That or she'll text me the following day to be like, Are you sure you have it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so we know that sickle cell can sometimes have like a psychological impact, most definitely can. Um, is there any like practices that you've got in place for that as well? Um, one of the things that I use a lot is breathing techniques. That's my big thing that I've found helps me. Um, because for me, when I'm in the middle of a crisis, what can happen a lot is I just, I can't think. And I, so I need to focus a lot. And so what I try to do is I, I will now even ask a lot of the time when people are around me, like, breathe with me. I need someone to like, so I can be in sync, so I can hear it. Like I just, it's just something that really helps me to kind of get my mind back. And then once my mind is back, I can think okay, I need to get some tablets or okay, I need a hot water bottle or something along those lines. So breathing techniques for me are my calming factor. Every so often if I'm in the office, I'll just walk to the bathroom and just take a few minutes and just like, okay, hold on. So it can help send to me to decide, especially like, do I need to go home? Do I need to go to the hospital? What do I need to do? So that's my big thing of just taking 10 seconds just to start counting my mind it's kind of like counting sheep and then <laughs> and then go from there I also squeeze my fist a lot when it happens <laughs> I think that one's involuntary though <laughs> yeah no that that sounds like a good thing because yeah when a, when a crisis comes over you it's like panic in a way because you're not sure how severe it's going to be what are the actions that you're going to need so centering yourself sounds like a good thing like to make those kind of split second decisions um because i like from my experience like i have a bit of a warning before a crisis happens so it's like, like full-blown crisis happens so it's like i have to decide 
is this serious enough for me to manage? Can I manage at home? Like, or do I need to go into the hospital? Um, yeah. Hospital is always the last resort for me though, but yeah, same. <laughs> we do what we can until we yeah. can't. Um, so yeah, that makes sense. Um, as well. I don't know. That's what I've found helps other people. What did uh, you say, sorry? Uh, the pain scale systems. Oh, yeah. I always explain to people. I think that's what doctors used to tell me. They're like, is it a one? Is it a 10? So every so often, like my family members, if I have them on the phone or something, what number is it? Is it a seven? Is it a six? And anything above a seven, I'm told I have to go to a hospital. They, they tell me I have to go. So I'll see how much I can ba balance and manage, but the pain scale system tends to work. Mm. That's a good, thing. yeah, that is a good system. Um, it's hard to quantify as well, though, I find. It is. Like sometimes my threes and sixes are the same. <laughs> they're, they're not that different. Yeah, it's like, is it flaring or is it like, is it, is it, is it down at the minute? In half an hour, it might be a six. Right now, it's a three because the, the painkillers are working. So, <laughs> exactly. Um, so, we know you're fortunate in that you haven't had to go on the blood exchange program, um, but have lots of friends who are. Um, what would, uh, what is the impact on donated blood for them? And like, how does it support them with sickle cell? Honestly, they get to live their life. So they get the, when they have their transfusion, it helps them in terms of monitoring their pain and handling their pain as well. It helps them in terms of being able to have the flexibility to decide what they want to do day to day versus just being in the hospital as often as every two weeks. And um, I think for them, I think the best description really is just it, it really helps them to be able to live because the, the impact of sickle cell can really just take away your ability to, to even move a lot of the time. Like I know when I have really bad crisis or crises, I I can't walk and that that happens to me every few months and that's my major major thing and that happens to them every few weeks and so the ability to get the blood donations and get support in that way and just help their bodies to fight for themselves it's just it supports them to really live life and it's it's horrible to to have your body be just, uh, just be a trap to you. It's, it's just, yeah, it can just, it can take you over physically and mentally. And so to have even a few hours, a few days, a few weeks of relief, it's just, it's, it's life-changing. It is life-changing and that's why we need blood donations because it's literally a yeah. gift of life. Um, Sorry, it's your gift of life to people with sickle cell. And yeah, if you can donate um, those in the audience, please sign up, um, register. I think Olivia's put the link in the chat. Um, so the last question I had for you was, um, what would your advice be to someone just starting out in their career who is concerned that having sickle cell may make it more difficult for them to succeed? Um, I think it's probably similar to what I've said a few times, but talk to people your support system is everything. And if you can have work be another support system, it will, well, it will really support you as you go through your career to be able to know you can turn to people and also it'll just really help you in terms of learning to advocate for yourself because people say it a lot but until you start to do it, it's, it's, a, it's a confidence booster when you know you can either stay or walk away based on it's kind of like a power <laughs> to be able to to say okay I know what I need I know what works best for me and you either will provide it or you won't and I wish I knew it more I mean a lot sooner in my career than I did I think it would have helped me not have some of the situations that came up earlier on in my career if I just turned around and said I can't do this. I need help. 
um because especially now in my current job it can be so busy so stressful and I can still turn around in my worst moments and in in the middle of a crisis and be able to say to like my team I am really sorry I have to bow out and know that I'm not going to turn around and be fired for it I'm not going to be penalized for it it just it's just part of my life and work is part of life and I will have support now and it's a real weight left off the shoulders yeah, that's amazing like I, I yeah I hear that a lot because I think um but when I used to have well I used to hide civil star in the workplace and just in in general like it affects you because you're not really embracing like your full aspect of your identity because you know mm -hmm. to the workplace you're someone else because you can't talk about sickle cell to certain people you're someone else because you can't talk about sickle cell but like it's unfortunately or yeah it's a part of you um and you have to be your full authentic self in these spaces so yeah 